You'd better wait here. Are you waiting? The others have not arrived. You will keep in the background, but the others must strike. Mallow Hall at two. Yes, sir. A copper Mallow Hall at two. Hey, Cabby. <laughs> Mallow Hall at two. Remarkable the strides that science is making these days. Yes, I've heard of a new death rate. But this is called... Baron Palenka and Erlini. I am sorry, we are so late. Dr. Marshall. It's quite all right, Baron. Gentlemen, the League of Nations has arranged this meeting for the purpose of demonstrating an invention which Sir James Blake assures us will end all wars. Sir James retirement from Scotland Yard to assist in the perfection of this invention by his niece and Mr. Sheehan is characteristic of his efforts to promote peace among the peoples of the world. You turn the car around for our getaway to London. Right. To assist in this demonstration, the Admiralty has placed at Sir James' disposal an obsolete battleship.
There will be no live sacrifice. The uh, ship is radio controlled. This uh, radio controlled ship, under the eyes of His Majesty's airmen, is cruising between 150 and 200 miles off Land's End. Uh, Mr. Sheehan has agreed to sight this ship in his visual finder and uh, destroy it. Why, it seems impossible. Incredible. Well, Jerry, this is where we take over. Will you explain the details as I work it? Right, oh. Gentlemen, if you will watch this visual glass, you may observe the operation. The instrument first sends out a magnetic beam directed by a series of elevators. Under certain conditions, this beam becomes visual. The magnetic beam stops the progress of the target, as you will observe. Then within 10 seconds, the explosion follows. Longitude 6 degrees west, latitude 50, 30 north. It was a perfect hit. The ship is sinking fast. Correct. Put me through to Mallow Hall. Mallow Hall, Sir James speaking. You, Admiral. Excuse me, Doctor. Admiral Brandon speaking. My dear, I'm as anxious as you and Jerry that it will work perfectly. It still seems incredible. The observer reports that it was a perfect hit at 190 miles. The ship is sinking rapidly. This makes navies passe. Standing armies will be a thing of the past. Ammunition stocks will drop to nothing. I heard it all, Uncle Jimmy. Isn't it grand? <laughs> I say, O'Prune, oh, that's show enough. <laughs> <laughs> May I share? Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, indeed. Very kind of you. You make us the greatest nation in the world with this invention. My uncle financed the perfection of this invention only on the condition that it become the property of the League of Nations. His desire is to end war. No nation shall have an exclusive claim on it. Every country, great or small, shall feel safe to pursue its development unmolested. We must dispose of our ammunition stock before the news becomes known. The bottom will fall out of our market. That little machine will do away with our organization. Doubtless you appreciate the necessity for every precaution. I've warned that Sir James his life will pay if this news reaches the wrong quarters. <laughs> Gentlemen, I've taken means to that end. It was a magnificent demonstration. Thank you, Baron. Good afternoon, sir. No. No wars, no espionage. Uncle Jimmy? Yes? We're sure we can dish it out, eh? Dish it out? What does that mean in proper English? Well, Jerry says that's American slang for... Blasting them out of your way. <laughs> I should have to talk to Jerry. I'm afraid he's corrupting your English. Ah. Count Basso and the Scorpion will make a fortune out of ammunition stocks when we secure that invention. Yeah, but our job is to secure the invention. Yeah, but our job is to secure the invention. Scorpion. Again, eh? <laughs> Count Basil. We mustn't forget those names, Bobby. Get the machine in the safe, quickly, and get Bobby upstairs. Jerry, come with me. Bobby! Oh, Doctor, I want you to help Hope. I'm depending on you to keep the children out of danger. Right, O Jimmy. Do you take 
Bobby to his room and then call the yard. Of course. Come on, sir. Oh, Dr. Marshall, please let me go. Telephone wires are all cut. What's going wrong? I wish I knew. Master Robert, Dr. Marsh ordered you not to leave your room, sir. What kind of an aid do you think me? I, I can help Uncle Jimmy. Now, clear out. Oh, I'm coming through. Now you go to... Ah! I'm sure Uncle Jimmy can take care of those men. He must want to your room. Come on. But Dr. Marshall, that isn't cricket. Come on. Don't leave me here. Oh, Uncle Jimmy. Uncle Jimmy, please Jerry? Yeah. Doesn't feel like my neck. you fall. I thought you'd be killed. <laughs> well, it was nice of you to worry about me, Hope, but I uh, landed on my head, but I didn't feel it very much. Oh, stop. You're kidding. Bobby! Bobby, come back here! Bobby, let's hear you, man. Well, thank you, Dr. Marshall. Well, let's take a look and see if Hope's timely use of the machine has left any of the intruders. Come on, Bobby. Jerry? 
Jerry, who were those men? Jimmy says they're a group of international spies working under the leadership of a man known as the Scorpion, the most dangerous menace to peace in Europe. You more rough jobs like this and I'll find honest employment. You know, I've always felt a woman had the worst of it. But it changed my mind after looking you fellas over. Say, that fellow Blake gave my arm one twist and I thought it was torn from my shoulder. Remain here while I telephone Count Basil in Paris. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> you will remain here until I return. I must destroy that invasion. Yes, sir. my dear. Anyone touching the gate or the spikes of the fence surrounding Mallow Hall will be jolly well shaken up. What do you mean, Jerry, is that they'll be not flat on their face? <laughs> you don't return to the use of proper English. Your sister refuses to remain on speaking terms with me. <laughs> Using your interest to curb my slang education, here. Well, I must say that isn't quick. But a very effective method, Bobby. Why? And knowing you're completely guarded is most restful. By the way, uh, have we any constables about the place? No, I feel fairly certain we can deliver the invention to Geneva before the news of it becomes generally known. Did you find him? No, I've checked every hut out I know. Anything more from Segalot? Yes. Must have invention to prove its worth. Do not destroy it as previously instructed. I see Segalov's trick now. The Scorpion should destroy the invention. Segalov would try to well turn his promise. Then we must secure the invention before the Scorpion can destroy it. Remember, the Scorpion ordered us to stay here. But the Scorpion doesn't know Segalov's trick. He'll be grateful when he learns that we've saved him. We'll work out the plan of attack on the way. Shove off.
He must be cured for life's invention at once. Come along. No, no. I feel quite sure that none of the family know that we built this house. of defeat in this project, you will turn that invention over to us intact. Or... No, Uncle Jimmy! No! No, Uncle! You leave me no alternative. to demonstrate the invention.
Turn that machine on Mallow Hall and destroy it. Don't give way. Oh. Don't, don't give over. 